Hello everyone, it's Ellen and today is Monday, so you know what that means. It's Mini Monday Madness on my channel. Uh, we do mini paintings, three inch by paint, three inch or sometimes two inch by three inch paintings. Uh, I just got into the habit of doing these because I think they're fun and easy, get you out of your comfort zone. You can create collections. There's so many variables you can do with mini paintings. Uh, today we're painting a mini spring barn uh, vignette kind of style. So I, I go over this step by step. I give you a reference photo that goes with this and you can see how we created just a small little vignette from the photo, which means you're not creating everything that you see in the photo, just some elements and maybe add some of your own elements in here. Um, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the Traceable. If you're not a Patreon member, well, Patreon is a place where I have exclusive tutorials on Thursdays that have Traceables. I have Traceables that go up my YouTube in the lower tier. And on the top tier, I have uh, exclusive tutorials and a live stream once a month from me that you can ask questions and follow along. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out right up here, right up here with the little I sign. Um, and see what that's all about. So if it, again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button to know when my tutorial's up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. We have a lot of fun over here. I love teaching people how to get out of their comfort zone and, and just feel some joy. So without further ado, let's get to painting. All right, guys, for this tutorial, I'll go over my supplies. I have a three inch square of Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I'll be using my Princeton 8 Long Round Velvet Touch Series brush. I'm actually going to use a number two pencil today. Um, paper tiles, paints. Um, we're going to use just limited colors today. And water jar here, you can see this this time. And I have a reference photo attached. And like I said, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable that I traced myself that I used. Um, so I basically kind of traced the, uh, the barn, but then I added the front door with the crisscross. See, this is how you take a photograph that's kind of like an inspiration, you edit it. I didn't want to put exactly like what they have here with the two doors and the little, I put the little teeny window, but kept out the two doors. I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. Uh, I'll keep in the trees. I think the flowers, these are like uh, <laughs> basically weeds, dandelions in the front. I'm not gonna have dandelions. I'll put flowers in front that are different. and. You know they have flower trees in the back so and I don't think I want the color to be red um, I want to do more of like rustic blue so you know you just take you take you can take the picture you can shrink it down like I did and then you can kind of trace the, the outline of the barn see I'm using the number two pencil here and I'm just see how I'm just pressing down on certain areas I'm not going to show all of it this is the similar way you could do with like the ink and wash if you want to do ink use a pencil. So I'm just going to go across here showing some of the actual architecture of the barn. I have the cross door here, the little window, and the little, little window on the bottom. And then I'm just making some little marks with the pencil out here. And then I'm going to figure out down front the flowers. Like I said, they were dandelions in the picture. I may make more of like a, it could be a sunflower, it could be you know, uh, tulips, uh, you know, more daisies probably like, so like just simple kind of daisy looking flowers in the field, maybe poppies, just doing some simple kind of rustic looking flowers, really loose. Maybe I'll draw a little couple of stems. I'm going to be painting in some touches of that. See, and then I'm just going to make little marks here for grass going sideways. Now, I know some people didn't like the ink and wash, but I say, as always, I know I say, oh, it's like pink by number and you maybe maybe dilute that the fact that they're teaching you something. What I mean by that is that it helps people who are intimidated, number one. Number two, it teaches you to draw. <laughs> and drawing is the most important thing that you have to do when you're doing any kind of work when it comes to art. I mean, without drawing, I mean, you can just go slap and paint down if you're going to do some simple abstract watercolor. But if you actually want to paint something that you see, you know, travels or around your grounds, you got to draw it. So here I'm just kind of penciling in the branches. Uh, and you have to get used to drawing. And the better you draw, the better your art will be, by the way. So there are tricks to this too. See, I'm just making little marks. And I put a little fence back here little lines just going down, going on an angle and crisscross of the fence. 
And that's as simple as it can get with the the pencil. You see that? I just didn't, I didn't draw like every little nook and cranny. You could draw some down some of the lines in the barn and get really technical. So it's more of a sketch kind of look. I didn't draw everything. And if you don't like that, you can always erase it. But I'm going to erase some of this little area here. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. This is a, like a gum eraser. I love it. Takes off all the little excess stuff that I don't like. We're going to keep those lines though. And you can keep the barn red if you want, but like I said, I'm not. I'm going to make it a different color, like like a rustic country blue. So I'm going to take my Prince Nate long round. I'm going to use this color called peacock blue. If you don't pick peacock blue, get a uh, turquoise blue. If you don't even have that, get cobalt. You don't have to use every single color that I do. Um, put a little yellow in there. So you see it's more green. I keep adding more blue. Now you can either add burnt umber to tone the color down. See that? Or you could do the same thing again. Add in complementary color to tone it down. So I had the blue, a little bit of yellow, and I can grab magenta or red and then tone it down that way. There's many ways you can do it. Sometimes I like just putting the burnt umber in and it's easier. So you get this nice little, I'm going to show you a scrap uh, of the color. And if I water it down with more water, it gets even lighter. This really pretty turquoisey kind of blue. I might add a little ultramarine to it to change the blue up a little bit more. See if I do that, it's going to turn into this kind of blue. It's a little too turquoise, a little more country blue there. So keep that, you add more water to make it lighter. And obviously you can't paint a big light, a blob of water on there. So that's why I have paper towel close by. And you tap it on the paper towel. See, I had it on my brush, tap it on paper towel so you don't see this bead of like paint going here. And we're just gonna put in a nice little wash, just fill in the front of the barn. You don't have to paint every nook and cranny, by the way, also. You see that? Just kind of loosely just painting that in. I might not paint all the doorway. I might not paint everything. See how I just kind of leave some white spaces? It just has a different look to it. And again here, we're going to make this part blue. Unlike the picture, we're changing things up. This is how you take, you know, I'm. I like the shape of the barn in this photograph. I like some of the things that they had, but I don't like the color of it. So we just put that nice pretty blue wash in there. Then you're going to add, when it dries, some variations of the, the wash to make it a little deeper. You can make a rust tone in there by adding some burnt umber itself. Just kind of bleed some of that in here, right? Looks a little rusty, worn out old barn that's been around for a while. See, it's very wet. This is why you do the tap paper towel thing. You can add some of this burnt umber. See, I tap my paper towel. Just really loosely sticking that color here and a little bit here. And we'll add the shadows in a bit. The roof can be like a rustic kind of coral red color. So um, I'll take some magenta here that I have. I have Quidacono magenta. It's already in my palette. If you have a red, mix that up. I'll grab some of the Cabin Yellow Deep and magenta. See, now I get this nice little reddish kind of coral color. And I'm going to water this down. Might be a little bright. You can add a little blue to it because it looks kind of orange. It's complementary. The tinge and it changes the color. Ah, see, it's a little better there. Again, if you don't like it, you can always do like a little scrap and you put it right next to your painting and you see. So here I'm tapping off that excess water. And I'm lightly putting in the wash of the roof. This painting should not take you long to do it all. Now again, we'll add in the shadows in a bit. It's the first wash. It would get a little darker back here. It's going to be lighter up here. So I'm adding in some, just bleeding in some deeper color that we already mixed. And there's a little roof. 
See, we're building, painting. Now we could put some grass in here and make it a little rustic, like, but make it, you know, we're making this more rustic kind of tones. So the grass, I have the yellow coming yellow deep, peacock blue, makes a nice pretty green. Green, I could add some red to it or some brown. So most people would add brown like this, or if you take that same green, his yellow and blue and add a little magenta, you get a dull down green also. It's either or, whatever you feel comfortable doing. So then you have your dull down green. See, and we see me tapping, going back here. If you can't see the paper towel, I'm tapping the color. I'm adding more water. And look, tap, 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 tip off the excess water. And I'm sticking my brush, turning the paper sideways. Let's see, I'm just going like this, just loosely putting in the green color. I'm not going to put it all everywhere. Putting it back here. If you want it brighter, you can make it brighter. You can add a little more yellow. See, I'm adding a little more yellow back here. I cleaned off my brush, tap water, boom, boom, boom. Got that yellow color, kind of building up the yellow, kind of going towards the front. And you can make it brighter still. See, I made that soup to cook the two colors we mixed in the beginning the peacock and the yellow. Make it a little bit darker, brighter green back here. Kind of my brush, tap, tap, tap. Just kind of holding it sideways. Okay, this is like a simple vignette. That's what I call them. That's what they are. You're not going to show the whole painting everywhere. There we go. Down front, we can kind of just put in some greens. See where the stems are. Tip of your brush, just going up and down. Kind of filling in around those pencil lines and around the daisy. We can keep them yellow. They could be like sunflowers. And see, I'm just making these little marks. Maybe grab some brown. Brown on the tip, burnt umber. It's already here. We don't have to make it, make our life harder, make it easier just by taking the actual color itself. Just making this little mark, see that? Boom. Now, the trees. We could keep them pink, like this is a pretty cherry tree here. If you want to do that, keep it subtle. I wouldn't keep it bright because we're doing these uh, kind of rustic tones. So I have magenta here. Might mix a little yellow with it. Just tone down that pink a little more. Okay. And add a lot of water to it. Again, tap paper towel. And then we'll see, we'll just kind of take the brush, look at them little taps. You can see they're dark. There's a method to this madness. Look at that, look like little dots, right? All right, so we get that, little dots. Clean up your brush, tap off a lot of excess water, clean up that brush, keep some water on your brush, and then, not a lot, but just a little bit, and then you're gonna tap next to all those little dots. Just kind of pushing down. If it get, becomes too watery, you come back to your paper towel. You see how I'm tapping all these little. And all these different spaces. And you can kind of push it down too. See, I'm kind of pushing it down. So it's a pretty little cherry tree blossom. Now you can get a little darker if you want to go take the tip of your brush and tap some of that magenta. I'll take some off on the paper towel that's already wet. And kind of bleed in some of this color, the bright pink. And go right over that barn. See, it's still wet in here. And if you want to get a little bit darker back here. Not everywhere, you see, just subtle. You can do the same thing down here, adding little cherry blossoms because they're coming over the barn. We'll add the branches in a bit. I'm just gonna add the color in first. Now over here, the white ones, so you can make it green or you can do cherry on both, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put some greenery there. So I'm gonna make the greens a little bit brighter by adding some yellow 
and some peacock blue again. And more yellow, just a little bit brighter, more like a neutral kind of green. Again, tap the paper towel. We have already the branches here. We're just gonna do little taps again. Grab some more water, tap on the paper towel. Tap, tap, tap. Those are bright. There is a little tree back here. You can kind of just put that wash of color kind of peeking behind the barn. Now that's a little bright, so I'm gonna go back in and add some of my dull greens to flank that. You can take some Prussian blue, which is up here. Get this a little activated by adding some water. Put a little bit on your brush and bleed it into the colors we already mixed. Get a little bit darker green. Just right on your brush, the blue itself. See that? Grab some warrior greens. We still have that fence there. I'm just gonna put some greens back here. Kind of grounding that green right there. It makes sense. See, we're creating this little vignette. Again, more of these greens here, a little bit darker, a little bit deeper. Kind of tapping again here. Now it's dark. I'm going to clean up my brush. Do the same thing I did here. Kind of tapping and adding. You play around. You can add some Prussian blue and bleed in some darker greens. See? Just in the tip of the brush. It starts to get too watery. Kind of take up some of the paint and tap back on the paper towel. You can add some deeper colors, some brown, some more Prussian blue. In ev some areas, not every area. See, I'm just kind of doing this section. And maybe a little back here. Because it's in the background. Okay, and a little shadow of the dark green. I'm adding, just adding Prussian, Prussian blue a little bit on my brush here. You can put some down here. Still got that Prussian blue on my brush. Just playing around. I mix it in with some greens. Voila, I can do some little marks here. Again, take the tip of your brush, just kind of go up and down and wiggle some greens, some browns, with little marks. See how I'm just kind of just tapping in little marks. Okay, so with the barn, I'm gonna go back to that barn again, that rustic door. You can keep it in the blue tones. You want to add some of the coral color. I might do a combination of blue and coral. Just kind of filling in the door, leaving the white space where the crisscross is. I think you can see that. It's really tiny, so take your time. I like to move fast when it's tiny. I want that um, organic kind of like loose style. So I might add a little on the tip of my brush. A little burnt umber, kind of just put some of that in the corners here. Could even add a little green, make it even browner too, or even that blue. See, just making it a little bit darker in the corners. Now that blue we had mixed, while it's dried and a little bit darker, just gonna go in here and put it underneath on the side here, the shadow. Get even darker still right up in here. It's starting to look a little green, so I'm adding some more ultramarine blue. And some um, burnt umber. Just trying to fill in the side here. I know it's looking a little turquoise, so I'm gonna just go and add some, here we go, some of the uh, burnt umber. So it looks like it's supposed to. And then I'm gonna put a little wash of color here, like a shadow. And then we're gonna take that roof, so it's one, one wash of color, start adding in some of the dried, darker color tones. So here, because that roof is like, ch -ch, goes down and folds down. This side would be a little bit darker than this side. You could put a little bit up here on the top. I keep this side darker. Again, add a little darker of that rustic color. You could kind of bleed some of that 
rustic kind of poppy color here. The window trim, you could put that around here. You know, play around with it. Just want to keep it simple and rustic. All right, so then the trees, brown. And I'm going to add neutral tint and a little burnt umber. I'm going to be cheating because I just don't feel like mixing everything. You don't have to do that. Just going to put in the color here. Now you can keep it lighter if you want to. If it seems like it's going to be so dark, just putting in the branches. Just We've already drawn them. Just going to kind of go in here. A little gray or brown gray and adding in some of the deeper tree trunks. Notice how I don't do every single little branch. I just kind of put in a couple little ones peeking through. You want to make this really simple for yourself. And I'll take a couple of that dark tones and kind of just peek a little bit. See, I'm kind of outlining the barn a little bit more again. We have the pencil, we can see it. See how that's going to pop that up a little bit? And there's a window here. I didn't put that in. I'm just going to add a little color there. Just a little touch of the neutral tint or any kind of brown or dark color you have there. You can even be Prussian blue. See, I'm going to add Prussian blue. And these branches back here are behind the barn. Just kind of outlining these little areas again. Oop, that door got a little dark. That's okay. And then you can go back in with your pretty pinks or whatever. You can kind of darken up a little bit. I'm going to just do some more taps with this cherry tree. Okay, so you put some of the cherry tree in there. I'm going to actually go back in with some of the deeper blues again. Just kind of fill in here. And by the way, have some white gouache close by because we're going to be using that. See so even deeper blue here, just under here. And flanking the side of the roof and a little bit darker down here. It is a side, the shadow side. I don't want to see too much white over there. So I'll add a little brown. And then you can make the greens a little bit deeper still. I'm making some deeper green with the Prussian blue, the yellow. But I'm just going to tap just with my brush, little marks, just a little bit darker on that side. Because the side is the light side, the sun's coming from this way. Put a bunch of little, these little teeny green marks of the darker green, kind of just going down here, a little bit out here. Don't want to get too fancy for Manchin. Now, you can see that the white is not going to go on this red because you can't see it. Grab some white gouache. If you have white gouache, you can mix it with your pink. Right with it. See? You can get more white on there. And you can do little teeny taps. So you have the blossoms going right over the barn and highlights. You can get more white on there. Because obviously the barn is going to be darker and you want the cherry blossom. You want to see them. So I'm adding a little bit more white. You see that? It's just really pale pink. Put that same pink up in here. But it'll be much whiter and lighter in front of the barn. And then I can add the branch to inside. Okay, and so in the front, just grab some of your cadmium yellow deep. You can grab it right out of the tube. You can add a little color if you want to. I'm just going to put little yellow daisies here. Like we we drew them in with the white center. Or you can make it black like Black Eyed Susans. Or you can make them little... <laughs> You know, all the little weeds that we have growing here. I'm just going to tap in all the little yellow colors. You can get as realistic in the front with these little daisies as you want. I'm kind of trying to fill it in more. I don't think it's necessary, but that's up to you. It's your preference. It's just a little spring vignette. Um, maybe I'd leave it white. 
and then the little details take your brush put the little fence in with some neutral color here neutral tint just gonna go in here and paint that little fence like I said you can kind of outline the barn with this color you can even go back in with the pencil I'm taking in here and putting in some of the branches little teeny ones coming out peeking through and the ones from the cherry blossoms just a simple sweet little vignette you gotta start concentrating on not having to make things complicated when you see a scene there's a lot of stuff going on here we just did a little a little snippet of it it's kind of like a little watercolor sketch you can add some more greens in the back here just to flank those little trees it's up to you again grab some blues or some shadows of the trees and then in here you can put some blue right behind these daisies like I'm doing here see some Prussian blue I might actually put a black center in them I don't know let's try it it could be black eyes even it's supposed to be spring but it could be little daisies that are black centers it's up to you guys and then you just do a little minutia detail so you can put the little blue lines coming down just across here play around with this get a little bit deeper again with that roof again it doesn't even have to be daisies you can actually add some I might put some purple flowers in there I have some ultramarine blue and some magenta I could put a bunch of little purple flowers water this down and see it's really deep purple right so I can just take water and kind of push that around and you've got the purple why not there's that color that I love right over here this little one Verdier blue from Holbein I mix it with my purple it's so beautiful just kind of tap that color around just a little titty taps very impressionistic looking now right and you can do the same with yellow just right on the tube maybe add green you can take the yellow peacock blue simple bright green I'm gonna add more yellow here let's go back in and add some of the bright green see I'm just doing those little taps it becomes very impressionistic looking when you do that Go back in here. Filling in the color, the greens. So it kind of just dropped out. So you just lighten that up a little bit. You can add some gouache to it to lighten it up. Again, I'm gonna go back over here now that it's dry with my white gouache and my little pink color and put in some of the pretty blossoms. I may have them kind of pink out this way too. And go back in and over in here. Just kind of fill that in a little bit. So spring blossoms. You know, you can even add some down here a little bit. I added some more yellow in here. Play around with this, guys. Have fun. You can go back in and add a little bit of bright yellow back here. So it's peeking in the background, not right here where the, the trees are. You don't have to do that. You can still make it green. It's all about play. You can add some more grasses, kind of going up here. Taking your brush. Right? Taking darker tones, putting little grasses in there. So this is just a little vignette of a little barn. I want you guys to play around with the photographs that you've taken, things that you like. I'm going to add in some more yellow in here because I can and I want to. Um, yeah, that's how you kind of look at things that way. You just don't have to paint everything you see. So let me know what you think. You know, you might not like this style. Uh, what do you think of vignettes? What do you think of the uh, idea of doing them? Do you get stuck um, painting the whole picture? Do you find this kind of thing to do? I'm adding a little darker tones again, the little lines. Hard to do, easier to do. 
love to hear feedback. I know not everybody likes the style, but that's fine. You can do something else. If this is a little too white, you can go back in here and add a little color. My point is to show you different techniques and different things that I like to do that I find helps you get out of your comfort zone, you know, helps you um, grow a little bit more, things like that. I'm adding some little deeper tones again, just under here. And that's it. That's my little blue barns for the spring. <laughs> uh, so again, I might go back in and add a little couple of darker tones in the barn in the front. We'll just, I'll be playing around with it here and there. So have fun, guys. Play around with it. Let me know what you think. And um, thank you so much for stopping by looking at little pieces of stuff. And uh, take care, and I'll speak to you soon.